Hello there everyone, it's Kathy Champion. How are you doing? I am so glad that you have tuned in with me today. We are doing another video on our Stampin' 101 and today I am going to talk about tools. The first part of my video is going to be on the basic tools that you need to get started. Not anything advanced, but just the basic tools and what they do and how important they are. Um, this is my host code for the rest of this month. This will run through the 31st of March. Uh, spend $50 before shipping and tax and you will receive a thank you gift from me as a token of my appreciation for you being a loyal customer along with a thank you card. And if you purchase any amount during uh, the month of March, your name will go in the drawing for the Darling Donkey stamp set. And y'all know I can never find that stamp set. Every time that I have done a video and I wanted to announce that stamp set, it is it is gone. <laughs> and it was right here. Ha! Huh, I, I put my hand on it that time. There is my Darling Donkey um, uh, stamp set. And this is a brand new stamp set and it's going to be given away uh, on the 1st of April and it will not be an April Fool's joke, I promise. So that is a, a little freebie for me for um, just getting your name in the pot by placing an order of any amount. Um, I think that's it. Um, I hope everybody was able to take advantage of the free shipping yesterday. Oh my goodness. Um, I can't imagine if you had uh, a $200 order, you would get $20 stamping rewards plus the free shipping, which would have been about $20. So you would be getting like $40 right there. I mean, just like that. But nevertheless, um, let's go ahead and get into this video. Uh, and I do want to let everyone know that I am a stamping up an independent stamping up demonstrator here in Gastonia, North Carolina. And if you're not currently working with an, uh, a demonstrator, uh, or if you are unhappy with maybe the person that you've been working with, I'm not here to steal anyone's customers. I am here to service you to the best of my ability and help you with any of your stamping up needs. So if you need to reach out to me, my information is on my um, website. And also you will find it in the description below this um, video so please feel free to reach out to me you can email me text me or call me now if I don't answer the phone please leave me a message with your contact information I am rather busy and if I'm if I am uh, doing a video like I am now recording or editing I don't always get to my phone so uh, leave me a message though and as soon as I can I will call you right back all right with all of that out of the way I want to go over the simple tools that we all need now this is our scoreboard this little item right here is what got me into stamping up I saw some demonstrators on YouTube using this um, trimmer slash scoreboard and I wanted this thing in the worst sort of way. So a friend of mine said, well why don't you just join and get the you know $125 worth of product for $99 and you know come in and enjoy the discount. Okay, I think I will. So I did and the first thing on my list was this trimmer. This very trimmer that I'm using now. I love, love, love this trimmer. Let me explain to you what's so nice about it. I'm going to leave it like this to show you the different components. First of all, you have this see-through um, arm that comes down, and this is actually your cover plate where your blade runs in. Um, you have housing area at the top and the bottom, so you can put your cut blade up while you're using your score blade, and then you can put your score blade down while you're using your cut blade. So it gives you the full length of your, um, your trimmer without having to take one blade off and put the other one on. The trimmer I had before had a score blade too, but you'd have to pop it out of the back and you'd have to change the blade on, in the housing. It was not worth it. This is a game changer. The other thing that I like about it is it has six inches. Actually, it's seven if you go all the way over, seven and a half if you go all the way over to here. So if you wanted to cut something seven and a half, you could butt it against this lip right here, right there, all the way over to this. Actually, it's six and a quarter. But what makes it so nice is you can put a piece of paper 
all the way over to here. You've got this nice thick lip up here that holds your paper in place. You're going to always get a nice straight cut. And when you put your paper like on the four inch line, you have got that line that will come all the way down. So if you've got a long piece of paper, it will come all the way down to the bottom. And you can see with your own eye that you've got your paper straight. And then if you make sure it's butted up against here, you're always going to have a perfect cut. Love, love, love it for that. The other thing that makes it nice, you have your numbers right here on here. So if you need to bring your cut blade down and cut from 2 to 6, you can see how to do it right there. Love that. It has a, um, a hole right here where you can hang it. I actually have a command hook right here on my little set of drawers that is right here under my desk. And I hang my trimmer right there by this little piece. And it gets it out of my way, but yet it's right at my right hand where I can grab it when I need it. The other thing I love about it, it extends all the way out to 17 and 1 fourth inches. Unheard of with most trimmers that you would have that wingspan. I love it. Uh, you have nice sturdy uh, grippers on the on the back that holds it in place so it doesn't slide around on your desk. Um, the blades are so easy to change. Let me let me turn it around and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to change the blade in this thing. You bring it's got a little indentation right here. You bring your blade down. Let me turn it this way. You press up on one side and you just lift your blade out. There, the blade, you can buy the replacement blades for these because your blades do get dull and you will need replacements. But the same way when you get ready to put it back in, it just pops right back into that groove and you're ready to go again. I mean, it in the same way, I never have to take this one out because it is a, uh, it's just a, a, like a little round wheel. Be careful with these because they are sharp and they will cut you. So I always say make sure you move that blade up out of your way when you're not using it. Um, for $25, this will be one of the best investments you ever make in your stamping up uh, purchases. Love, love, love. I cannot sing the praises enough. This is a nice um, surface that you have on it. It actually has a coating on it that you can wipe down. I wipe it down all the time. They say not to use alcohol on it, but hey, I have used alcohol wipes on it, and it doesn't hurt it. It cleans up really good. You can clean your track out real easy just by running, because uh, you do get little paper fibers that build up in there. And I usually, sorry, I usually just take my, take your pick tool, and I'll run that down my little track, just like that. And this is what came out well. I threw it out on the floor, but a little a little crumb of paper did come out. You can wipe that down. You can wipe it down with just a damp cloth, whatever, to keep it clean. You cannot ask for a better trimmer, and I'm here to, to tell you that if you are starting in paper crafting, you want a good trimmer. You want something that's durable, something that's going to last you, and something that will give you accurate cuts. There is nothing that is more depressing to, than to be a new crafter trying to learn the skill and have a trimmer that doesn't perform like it should. This trimmer will give you the results you want every time without a doubt. As long as you follow the guides and put your paper up, line everything up on the line where it needs to be. Also, this trimmer has sixteenths. So you have sixteenths, eighths, quarters, halves, and then holes. I love the fact that it does break it down. You also have um, the metric system is also on here. I'm down on this side. This right here is your inches. Um, love it. I just, like I said, I cannot, and it tells you right here, centimeters are up here, inches are down here. So you will not be confused as to what, which is which. Again, it is a win-win. All right, now that is probably in our simple tools one of the most expensive. The other one that I reach for all the time is my Take Your Pick Tool. Now, your Take Your Pick Tool comes with two of the putty ends, and you can buy these to replace. Uh, they are so great for picking up, let's say, y'all have seen me do my cards where I slide off my jewels, but say you have a whole bunch of little flowers, and you can just spread them out 
or have them in a little small dish and you can use that putty in to pick them up and place them on your card like you would want them to be. I'm going to zoom you back in a little bit. Um, this side right here, if you, we haven't gotten to talk about dies, but this thing is great for dies. It also has an attachment. Um, this comes out and you have a little spatula so you can turn, put this in. And now you have a little spatula on that end. Also, let me grab the other pieces that come with that. You get two more stylists. So you have um, stylist with the larger head, a medium, a real fine one. And, uh, I mean, just there's four different tips right there. And they, they change in and out just like, um, just like these did. What is in there? I felt like I was hitting something in there. Oh, there we go. So that just screws in just like that and comes out. Um, I do keep this one in here the most because I use this for pulling off backers on my tapes, my um, Stampin' Dimensionals, and things like that. But say, for example, you just needed a little... Um, I've seen people put pick up their uh, gems with this. See, it's kind of flexible. It's a great little spatula that works really great. Um, now, for me, like I said, I keep the pick, the little pointed one, on there the most. And then if I need one of these, I can just reach in my drawer and get them. And then this is the screw-in side. And like I said, these come in refills. And here is... A couple of the refills it comes with two when you buy it you'll get two of these and there's also another attachment that goes with this and that is um, the brush and I'm going to show you that as well let's get everything put back together and put this back in here and I'm going to show you the brush that comes with the take your pick and it comes I have mine in a paper pumpkin box, yes, and I have two of these because I am a demonstrator. Um, I kept one of these with the pick tool on one end and the brush attachment. Now, the brush attachment is separate. So you buy this, and it comes with these two foam mats. Now, excuse my mess in here, but these foam mats work great for laying down your piece that you die cut, and then you just have this attached to it or if you just have the one take your pick you just change out the the one end this end for this end and then you run it across your piece and it takes out every bit of your um little small bits and pieces in a die especially the detailed dies so i keep this in a, in a in half of a paper pumpkin box and I keep it right underneath my desk so that I can reach for it whenever I need it and that works great for me to be able to clean out my dies and to clean out my little pieces so that is another tool the next one is your bone folder everybody needs a bone folder if you are working with and here's a here's a piece of paper I was working with earlier let's say for example I wanted to fold this now, I would have it scored normally, but let's just say I wanted to fold that down to there. This bone folder is going to help you get that nice sharp crease that you're looking for. And see how that keeps that laying down? Everyone needs a bone folder in their, in their craft room. And the Stampin' Up! bone folder is really nice. It feels almost like it's made. Um, I've used some that were plastic that I didn't like. Now, I am a fan of the Teflon bone folder, but uh, Stampin' Up! doesn't carry one of those right yet. I'm hoping that they will bring something like that in. But for right now, this one works fantastic. I love it. So... That is another one of our, what I consider a simple tool that you need in your craft room. The next thing is our paper snips. Now you might say, what have you got a piece of ribbon around that for? I have two pairs of paper snips because I use one for my everyday cutting and even glue. And I'll use a little bit of the uh, stamp cleaner and wipe my blades off if they get sticky. But I save one pair for the everyday cutting and I have another pair that I dedicate to nothing but fussy cutting. And the reason for that is when you're fussy cutting, you've got to be very precise. I'm not saying that everybody needs two of these. I'm just saying for me, being a demonstrator and doing videos, that it worked good for me to have two pair. 
Um, but these little paper snips are great. I mean, they will trim your ribbon. Uh, they will cut little ed wedges and stuff out of your cardstock. Um, trimming off the edges of something. This is a great little pair of paper scissors. I love them. I think that they're... Uh, I had used another brand that I will not mention, but these are as good, if not better quality than the little yellow ones that, and I think everybody knows what I'm talking about, that I, that I used to use. And, and that was before I became familiar with Stamping Up's pro products and the quality. And everything in Stamping Up is quality. All right, so that is all of the simple tools. Now, this would be a consumable, so I don't think that that would be a tool. When I think of tools, I think of investments. These are investments, things that aren't going to break. These are things that are going to last you for years and years. That's why I took these out as being my simple tools. Um, you will need a ruler, but Stampin' Up! doesn't carry rulers, but they do sell this grid paper that has rulers on it. If you notice, you have a center line right here, so it's great for finding the center of your cardstock. Um, you have your inches, and everything's broken down into sixteenths across here, which is great for finding your measurements. You have a little place over here on the side for your notes, and yes, these are available not just for demonstrators, but for anyone. And you can tear your sheet off. Y'all see me, when I get one side dirty, I'll tear it off and fold it, and I'll bring it back out. I have some in my drawer right here beside me. And I'll I'll bring those back out and I'll use the other side when I'm stamping or when I need to put a small piece of paper on my stamp and pierce mat. This is another thing that should be listed in my simple tools. The stamp and pierce mat is not listed in the catalog but in the video description below you will find this and the order number. If you are working with photopolymer stamps and you might say what is a photopolymer? Now I think we covered that but like my hydrangea um, haven these are photopolymer. They are your clear um, photopolymer. This is the material that these are made out of and these stamps need some cushioning. They have no cushion whereas the, the cling stamps have a cushion, these don't. So it's very beneficial to put this on a stamp block, and then when you put this down on your piece of paper, and I'm bringing the same piece of uh, scrap paper where I was practicing some folding, when you push down, you need that little bit of a give. Um, before I discovered Stampin' Up!, I was using an old mouse pad an old um, ugly green mouse pad. It didn't have the same um, amount of cushioning that this had, but I did learn that photopolymer stamps needed that cushion to really give you a nice crisp image. And I've always thought the clean stamps are so much better than the photopolymer, but it's because I was using these on a, a hard surface, and you need that cushion. So this is called the Stampin' Pierce Mat, and Stampin' Pierce Mat. So it's like Stampin' as in Stampin' Up, but Stampin' Pierce, um, Stampin' Pierce Mat. And like I said, I'll have the, and these are cheap. They're like five bucks and so worth it. Uh, and that's the same way with this. This tool right here, the way it comes with two putty ends and all of those accessories that go on this, ten bucks. You will reach for this every time you craft. I know I do. It is a staple in my hand when I am crafting. So um, I want to move on to a few more of the more advanced um, tools in, in uh, Stampin' Up! because I kind of want to cover all of the tools so that you can get an idea of exactly what is out there and what you might need for your stamping needs. All right, so moving along, I'm going to put my other tools back up here where I keep them. The Stamparatus, which many of you see me use, is a stamp positioner. And I have talked about this. I even have a video where I really reviewed this in depth. And it comes like this. You get two uh, of your um, acrylic. You get two of your acrylic um, doors. And let's see. I'm sorry about that. I had I had something that just popped up on my phone. Okay. Um, but you do. You get two of these doors. Now you never want to close them in on each other. Always take one out. 
you can store it with the door inside like that and this one over it, but you never want them to both be hinged and try to store them because it will not work. Now you take this pad out when you're using um, clean stamps because this gives you that nice hard surface that you need. But if you're using photopolymer, you're going to put this in. Well, there's a problem with that because this is the way the stamp the stamp apparatus comes. It comes just like this. But in order for you to um, be able to see the lines, if you needed to line it up, they do have an upgraded mat, and that's this one. It's made out of the foam, but look at the front of it. And this has a plastic coating on it so you can wipe it off if you stamp off on, on it. So I love this mat because it shows me my grid lines. It is a little extra cost to get it, and I didn't buy it initially. I went ahead and used this one for quite some time, but then I decided, yeah, I think I need that one. And I do love the fact that I can have that. What is so great about this having the two doors, and I was a fan uh, of, of the Misty, and I'll, I'll call that one by name, uh, until I tried the Stamparatus. And I had tried other uh, stamp positioner tools. Um, there's, there's many out there. Uh, but when I tried this one, I really loved it. I love that you had uh, two whole sides over here that are open. You don't have that on the Misty. You have one side that's open. Um, this one, you can put stamps here and here, and all you do is lift this off and turn it for your next stamping. So if you're doing the two-step stamping, sometimes they're four steps where you're doing flowers and you're layering the color, you can position all of your stamps and then just flip. That way you don't have to clean a stamp, take it off, put another one on and position it. You can position everything to start with, and then all you, and especially if you're doing mass production like invitations, um, um, your Christmas cards, um, uh, maybe you're doing birthday invitations or whatever. This thing is a godsend. So, and another thing it does, if you wanted to do progressive stamping, you could put a stamp right here, stamp it, lift your door up, move it down one notch, stamp it, lift your door up, move it down one notch, progressive all the way down. You just don't have that versatility in any other stamping platform that I know about and I'm pretty versed when it comes to tools because I love myself some tools and <laughs> they are like they are like my my jam I like having my tools you see that's not going to fit underneath there with the mat in because I had both mats in um, so I usually store this door separate from the rest of it and I keep these mats inside here just like that for the cushioning. Now the Stamparatus comes with two very strong magnets and they have housing area back here for you to keep them laying. But you hear you hear that? Do not, and y'all have heard me say this before, do not allow these magnets to clink together. Mine did, that's why they're wrapped up in washi tape because they broke in half. Uh, so both of my magnets are in two pieces. So I wrapped them up in washi tape and I put myself a little handle on them so that I can pull them up and down and that works great. If you don't have washi tape, some painter's tape will work. In fact, I believe the screen tape is frog tape. I believe it is. Um, so it works really good just to wrap them and, and put them under there, but only use one of them. If you put two of them on here together, they're going to come together because they are very attracted to each other. <laughs> But I do love my Stamparatus, and this is a tool that you will definitely, if you do any amount of paper crafting, you are going to want to invest in the Stamparatus. All right, that's another one of the advanced tools. Now, is this something that I use every time I, I make something? No. But when I need it, when I need it, it is very um, beneficial to my crafting to be able to have something like this to do my stamping with. So that is enough on that. The other thing is the Simply uh, Score. This is Stamping Up's um, scoreboard. And yes, our trimmer does um, scoring. I'm going to move my grid paper so I can sit this down flat. Because see how sturdy it is? Oops, <laughs> it's so sturdy that when I shook it, I knocked something off. I knocked my eye drops off. <laughs> I don't know if y'all keep all your little dew, dew flotchies, but I have really dry eyes, so I keep an eye drop right in here on my 
work surface so if I need to put eye drops in I just knocked them down off of my um, I had them sitting up on my little ink stand where I keep my inks on and anyway um, it looks like I've got something on this I'm sure it's just paper but I marked halfway using the uh, Stampin' uh, Chalk marker and I put that white mark down the middle for my own purpose and if you're doing any angle uh, where you're lining up a tick mark and maybe a score line in your in your um, scoreboard that white line definitely helps you see exactly where you need to line it if you're looking at these lines you can't tell if you're in the right place when you get down here am I in the right groove I can't really tell am I no, I'm way over here. So that white line keeps you straight. So, and it doesn't, I mean, it's, I use this little chalk marker. It's called Stampin' Chalk Marker. And it's just a little white tip. And I just run it. And this fades from time to time. But I'll just come back. And, and I'm sure you could wipe this off if you wanted to. But that works really well for marking that. And uh, it's just, it's just one of those things. It comes with... If you look down here, that's the bottom of it, and it comes with the stylus that has the larger end and a smaller end. Um, the smaller end is great for your card stocks. Um, this one is for your thinner card stocks and your paper because it, it rides above the groove rather than down into the groove so you're not as likely to rip your paper with this one as you would with this so let's 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 score something let's put this right here and let's say I want to score right here on the six inch mark now I'm going to use the smaller one because this is cardstock and I'm going to come down just like that and now I've got a nice scored line now, if let's say I wanted to score at three inches, but I don't want that score line to be quite as deep. So I'm going to use that one. See, it works too. It gives you a wider score line, but look how pretty that folds. Love my, um, my um, Simply Scoring uh, scoreboard. It also has a little compartment up here at the top. And if you lift up and push back, like that you have a storage and you, it comes with these little markers where you can mark um, again if you were doing oops and I didn't it looks like I didn't tore it apart I haven't this this fits right back on here um, it's little hinges right here that this pops into so and that's another thing with stamping up um, tools they're very durable um, I haven't had anything that I had broken as of yet. Y'all not I notice I said as of yet. So let's say four and a quarter. That is a that's a size that we as a card maker we always need four and a quarter. So you can put that there and say five and a half. And there are your your marks. So when you put your piece of cardstock up here like this. Now this is an eight and a half by five and a half. And I automatically know that to make this a card, I'd want to score right there at the four and one fourth. So there we go. Perfect fold every time. Look at that. Perfect. So I do love the scoreboard, and I love the fact that it has a stylus and not one of those little plastic things. And the fact that it snaps in, listen to this. So it's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to lose it, and I love that. So that is the um, Stampin' Up! scoreboard, or a scoring tool. I love it for that reason. That is one of my go-to um, tools. Now, another tool that is a bit of a, uh, is kind of an investment. It's not too bad. If you do heat embossing, we have not got to heat embossing as of yet. But their heat tool, this is the Stamping Up heat tool. This thing is absolutely fantastic. It has this nice plastic around it. Now this does get hot, so I wouldn't say when it's on to touch this. But it is a protector from the actual metal. It has a kickstand on it, so it will sit up on your table. When it's not in use, you can set it. 
Um, you have a good a good lengthy cord to it because I got it plugged in behind me and I can stretch it all the way to the other side of my desk, which is nice because when you're using it, you're usually going to be up above your uh, surface. Not only that, it has two speeds. You have a one, whoops, one and two. And what is so great about that, if you are doing watercolors and you need a quick draw, you can do that. You've seen me use it when I've done my, um, my, my alcohol blending on the vellum. I use my heat tool on one. But anytime you're doing heat embossing, and we will get to heat embossing later in the series, but that's when this heat gun really shows you what it can do. And we will definitely get to that. But this is another tool. You buy it, it's going to last you a good long time. And this one is absolutely fantastic. I love it. All right. So the next thing, as far as tools go, would be your, ink, your stamp cleaners. Y'all all know that I love my Stampin' Scrub. Now this is the Big Daddy. This is the one, and I, I do suggest to use it with the Stampin' Mist. And I'm here to tell you, this one's got Stampin' Mist on it, but I haven't used it in a while. You can activate it with just some water. I keep one of these little spray bottles, and I just spray some right there. What's so good about this is you have one side that is for drying and one side that's for washing. So you use one side wet, one side dry. Works out great because you can scrub your stamps off on this side. You know, scrub, scrub, scrub. You come over here and you can clean, clean, clean. Now, I don't have a stamp on that. But see, it, it wipes it all clean. And I think this is probably one of the best stamp cleaners that I have ever used. Uh, now, it's not to say, the for a simple cleaning, um, where's my little chamois? For the simple cleaning, the Simply Chamois works great. And this is what one looks like when you first get it before it gets, you know, completely. You just go and wet this under tap water. You've seen me use it. Um, this is what it looks like when it becomes decrepit and, and used. Now, this is clean. I, I washed this last night, so it is perfectly clean. But it is stained. And I will tell you, if you get one of these, don't expect it to stay like this. It's going to get dirty. But I love the fact that they work so good. And the reason I put two in here, I try to clean on this one and then wipe back off on this one. That's why I've got a little bit of discoloration here, not to mention when I close it, the dirty part goes against that. But that's what I do. I'll try to clean here, you know, clean and then clean. And it, do, it does leave a little water residue on your stamps, but you can just dry that off. A lot of times I just dry it off. If I got on a pair of um, sweatpants or jogging pants or whatever, I'll just dry it off on my, on my pants. Or I'll use one of those little microfiber cloths and I'll dry it on that. But these are investments that you will buy and use over and over and over. They're not consumables. Consumables are your paper, your glue, your dimensionals. Things like that are things that you will use up and have to buy more of. But these things are tools that will last you for a good long time. Now I'm going to get to the big boy. And everyone that does paper crafting, in my opinion, needs a good die cut machine. Now I'm going to show you two of them because uh, Stampin' Up! has both the Mini and the, the Big Daddy. Now, most people call it the baby boss, the boss and the baby boss. I don't know what I call mine. I just know that I love it. So I'm folding it up to bring it up here. And I'm going to zoom out because I want you to get it. Mine's a little dusty. It needs a little TLC, I guess. Um, it sits over here at my right hand because I do love it. But here it is. And it's probably about eight pounds. I'd say eight to ten pounds. It's not. It's not terribly heavy, but it's definitely not light. Um, it comes with all five of these plates. You get a base plate, your die cut plate, two cutting plates, and a specialty plate. Now these these plates come with your machine. So. When you open this up, I'm going to put my stamping this back over there. When you open this up, look at the footprint you have. You have quite a footprint here to put your dies on. 
And if you're and for people that don't know what die cuts are, um, dies are shapes, um, images, butterflies. Y'all see me do the butterfly cards? I cut those with this using this machine. That's how I get those. Um, there are so many other uh, alphabets. Um, flowers, um, flamingos, <laughs> oh my goodness, I mean, you know, there's, there's shape dies, there are, there are label dies, there's, I mean, there are just, oh, there's hundreds and hundreds of types of dies, and Stampin' Up! almost always has dies that coordinate with their stamp sets. Hydrangea dies goes with Hydrangea Haven. And you need this die machine in order to use, or you need a die machine. They'll work with any of them. But for my everyday cutting, this is my go-to. But you want to see something cute? Let's set this one right here, like so. And I'm going to get the baby. Look at that. It is a teeny tiny baby die cut machine. Now, I will tell you this. If you can only afford one die cut machine, get the big one. You will not be limited. If you get this one, you're going to be limited to what embossing folders you can use, what dies you can cut through, because it only has like a three inch footprint. And three inches is not enough. Now, I got this one because I think it's adorable, and when you need to cut something small, it's right here on your desk, and you can use it. Um, but, you know, if you can only afford one, I'd get this one. But now, if, if this is the only one you can afford, by all means, get this one. It's better to have a die machine than not to have one. But you do have to be careful what dies you get as to whether or not they will fit in this one. So when you are doing your sandwiches... You always start with your number one plate and see how easy they make it. They number everything for you. Your number one plate, your die cut machine. So if you're doing die cuts, this automatically goes on next. And then you always have a cut plate. And if you notice my cut plate, you can tell that's the one I cut with. And this is my cover plate. So there are two number threes. You, ch you choose one of them to be your cut plate. It goes down next. Your, your card stock. And then your die with the blade side down, and when we'll get to die cutting, and I'll explain that further. And then you put another one over top of it. You even them all up, and you crank it through. This has rollers inside of it. It pushes that die into the paper, and it cuts out your your images. And oh my gosh, it is absolutely beautiful. Let's let's use this piece of paper, and I'll just grab one die and show you real quick, for any of you that don't know what a die does, I'm just going to do one of these flowers. This is from the Pierced Blooms, one of my favorites. So I'm just going to lay that on there. And let's put this down over top of it. And of course this is white, so it's not going to be that pretty, but it will at least show you what it does. And when you bring that through and you take this off, Look at what you've got. You've got this beautiful stitched die, and you can cut the pieces that go in the center, and you've got a beautiful flower to decorate with. So, like I said, having a good die machine um, is absolutely... Um, I can't imagine anybody making cards and not having a die cut machine. Um, I know there are many people that don't have one, uh, but for me, I love my dies. The other thing is the embossing that it does. Now, when you are embossing, you have two kinds of embossing folders. You have dynamic or 3D. They used to be called dynamic. They're now considered 3D. And let's see if I can find one. Here's one. This is the Ornate Floral. And this is beautiful, delicate little flowers. And let's let's run this piece of um, gorgeous grape through here. I think it'd be really pretty. And you have little lines here. See the line right there? That gives you a place to kind of line up your cardstock. Because some of these you want to make sure you get them nice and straight, especially if they have a, a, a set pattern to them. You close it up. 
And this is a 3D, so I'm going to use the specialty plate. So all you need is your number one plate, your folder with your cardstock in it, and then your number four plate or your specialty plate. You lay that down over top and you crank that through. Just like that. And I'll wait till you see. When you open this folder, all of those little details are in that cardstock now. Isn't that beautiful? Is that not gorgeous? So that's what, and this is considered dry embossing. This is a dry emboss. And there's other ways to use these folders. You can ink them and run them through and put the, press the ink into the uh, paper. That you can take one of these and go over it with a, a brush and lay some color down on it to make it look um, to come alive and kind of pop. There are so many different techniques that you can do. So those are just a few of the things, but I would say that these are the most important tools that I turn to every time I come into my craft room. I die cut. I um, heat emboss. I use my scoreboard. I um, you know, I, I definitely use my scissors and my other tools, my take your pick tool. All of these things are very important to me in my everyday crafting. So I'm hoping that by me going over some of these different tools and I will, everything that I showed, I will list the order number in case you're interested. And even if you're not interested in ordering today, you can jot that number down, put it on your wish list. And everything that I showed you is currently in the catalog. Now we are having a new catalog that's going to come out in May. And I'm not sure exactly what's going to be discontinued or what they're going to revise or what have you. We don't know until we see the catalog. I will get a sneak peek on the 24th, but that's the same day I'm going in for my revision on my um, my dental implant. So <laughs> I don't know how much of the catalog I'm actually going to view that day, but hopefully it won't be too bad. That's a week from today. So I do covet your prayers and thank you again so much for tuning in. I hope that by watching even the crafters that are seasoned, sometimes just a refresher course. And maybe some of you were not familiar. You might have been crafting for years, but you were not familiar with the tools that Stamping Up has. So hopefully this has helped you. If you are interested in any of these tools or if you have questions about anything that I showed today, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'll be glad to give you a call. I'll be glad to um, email you details. Uh, whatever you need, I'll try to explain to the best of my ability. And if I cannot answer your question, I will find someone that can. So again, thanks so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I value you as a friend. And I just want to say God bless and keep you. And remember as I close, I always and I will always say, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is so worthy of our love and our praise. And until we craft again, God bless and keep you. Bye-bye.